On your screen right now, you can see a commit from Linus Torvald. If we go and hover over his profile picture, it'll actually take us to Linus's account. So by all accounts, this seems like it's actually Linus. So is Linus a little bit sus? Well, maybe. I don't want to rule anything out, but there might be something else happening here. If you've ever used Git before, you'll know it comes with a credential system. So when you set it up, you're supposed to go and set a username and an email. This can be changed on a repo by repo basis. So for, let's say, your work repos, it'll probably be your actual name and then your work email. But then something public, maybe you'll use a pseudonym and, I don't know, some throwaway Gmail account or whatever you want to use. And this is perfectly fine when you're working on a small project or maybe you're working just with a bunch of friends and no one else cares about the repo or even if you're working on just a private repository but when you're working on a public repo this becomes absolutely meaningless and it's really hard to call this identity spoofing because this is something built directly into the way that Git was designed. I don't want to call it a vulnerability either because this is one of the things that makes Git so powerful. You can just go and set your username and email to anything you want. There's no way to verify that you're the one who actually owns that data. And outside of sites like GitHub and GitLab, where you're managing things through mailing lists or various other means like that, it works perfectly fine. But on sites like that, you start seeing problems like this. So what's happening here is Linus Torvalds actually does have a GitHub account. That GitHub account is associated with a name and an email address. So when Linus Torvalds commits something to Git and then it sends it up to the remote on GitHub, it will say that Linus Torvalds is the one who actually did that. That even happens when Linus Torvalds isn't the one who actually did it because, as I said earlier, there's no way to verify that that name and that email is actually coming from that Linus Torvalds. So does that mean that Git is a security nightmare and nobody should ever use it? Well, no, because Linus designed Git in a certain way, and if you use it in the way he expects, it's going to work in a much nicer fashion. So, as I said, Git has a credential system. If you know someone's credentials, then you can become that person. What you need to do is work with an identity system. An identity is something that uniquely identifies that user. That would be something that you don't share with anyone else. Things like, say, a password, or in Git's case, a private key. So Git integrates with a system known as PGP, or I guess the open standard is called OpenPGP. Now, there's probably encryption systems out there that are, you know, stronger and more robust, but PGP is still the standard for encrypting emails, and for working with Git, it's perfectly fine. Now, depending on the operating system you're using, the implementation of PGP that you're using might change here and there, but they're all working with the same OpenPGP standard. So on Linux, it's very common to be using something like GNUPG, better known as GPG, whereas on Windows, you might be using GPG for Win or one of the other countless PGP applications out there. Basically, what gets done with PGP is we go and sign our commits. This says that this bit of work that I'm sending to you was made by me, and that guy who has the exact same credentials as me is not the same person because our identities don't line up. You may have heard of the term PGP signature before when you download something like a Linux ISO. This is to verify that when you download that ISO, that ISO is actually the ISO you think it is. So when you commit something in Git, there is an option called dash dash gpg dash sign. This basically assigns a gpg signature to that commit. That signature is going to be generated using your private key. This private key you do not share with anyone, you treat this like a password. If you lose your GPG key, then you have to make sure you reset it, and then also go and contact whoever you are using GPG signatures with. Over on things like GitHub, GitLab, things like that, there is an option to provide it with your public key. So when you commit something on Git and then you push it up to the remote, GitHub is going to use the public key that you assigned to it to go and verify whether that signature is actually a signature generated by this key pair. 
if it returns the correct value, then GitHub knows that this is commit that you made. And I believe that it goes and gives you a little verified tag next to every one of the commits that has actually got a verified signature. Now that's how it works. And in theory, if you have everybody on GitHub, everybody on GitLab supplying a public key and then signing their commits, you won't have problems like this actually happening. What happens in practice though, is maybe some people give GitHub a public key, but they never actually sign their commits. Now you can have a service like GitHub only accept commits from verified PGP signatures, but if you do that, then you lose out on a bunch of random commits you otherwise would have gotten because some people are just honestly too lazy to set up Git properly. In my opinion, GitHub should not be associating a GitHub account to a commit unless it has a verified signature because you could very easily go to some random ass repo, say some really racist shit and pretend to be, I don't know, Linus Torvalds or some random person you don't like. And this is a feature built into GitHub. Now, don't go and do that. I'm not endorsing that, but that is something that GitHub allows you to do. Or at least let the user decide whether their GitHub account is going to be associated with commits. I absolutely get why it's convenient. If you just want to go and commit something to some random repo and have it associated with your GitHub account, that's great. But I would like the option to at least control it, and this is something that GitHub could probably fix you know, in at most a day. Some people have gone as far as saying that sites like GitHub and GitLab shouldn't accept commits unless they have a verified signature. But in my mind, I don't think it should really go that far. You can already control it on a repo by repo basis and maybe your repo just doesn't care and is willing to get, you know, commits from Mark Zuckerberg and Linus Torvalds. If that's what you want to do, be my guest. And while not being 100% required, this entire thing is the reason why in the Linux kernel, PGP signatures are very, very highly encouraged. And in some cases, if you're not a developer who's already experienced working with the kernel, your commits won't be accepted unless they have been signed. Now, in some cases, that's not always true, but it definitely has happened many times in the past. Now, I had a good laugh about this, and with a project that's, you know, basically just a joke, stuff like this is cool. But I know it's very tempting to go and troll serious projects like this. And I know it's going to happen now that I'm giving it more attention. I am not responsible for your actions and I do not endorse trolling actual serious projects like that. Project like Among Us, you know... I, look, I can't say that it's not funny in a case like this. So that's going to be pretty much it for me then. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you know that Git had this, I guess you could call it a design flaw, but it's sort of just there to make it have a more decentralized security model. Let me know your thoughts down below. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, sell, so verify linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.